consumer surplus. So this is one of the topic in uh, Indian Economic Services exam, paper one. So what we're going to do in this particular recording is we're going to talk about different kind of the questions which have been asked in this particular uh, topic. So what is consumer surplus? What is producer surplus? How do you calculate consumer surplus? How do you calculate producer surplus? Uh, given the different demand functions and the supply functions, how will you calculate uh, consumer surplus? What happens in case of the price increases or decreases to consumer surplus and producer surplus? These are the different kind of the questions uh, which we're going to tackle in this particular topic. So the first question says, and this question appeared in uh, IES paper one, uh, question 1A, 2010. Define consumer surplus and derive an expression for it using an integral calculus. So what is consumer surplus? See, consumer surplus is the difference between the total amount that consumers are willing to pay and the total amount that they actually do pay. Right. So rather than to go without the commodity, you get the point that is uh, consumer surplus is the amount for example if i want to pay uh, 10 rupees for a particular thing rather than to go without it and i'm this i'm being asked to pay only five rupees then the consumer surplus is five rupees because what i'm willing to pay is 10 rupees and what i am paying is five rupees because that's what have been asked uh, from me to pay right so consumer surplus is the difference between the total amount that consumers are willing to pay this is what is indicated by the demand curve and the total amount which they actually pay which is the market price that comes through the intersection of demand and supply so for example if you have this kind of you have the demand curve, right? I'll just extend it like this. And uh, so you have the quantity here, you have the price here. So at this price, nothing is going to be bought. And uh, for example, let's assume that. Uh, the price is given by this much. This is the price which is given. Let's say this is P star. Right. And at this, the quantity is Q star. Right. So, for one unit, let's say, for only one unit, right, I would have been willing to pay this much price. Okay, So this is like the textbook explanation for consumer surplus. This is the price which I'm willing to pay for one unit. For second unit, I'm willing to pay this much price. For third unit, I'm willing to pay this much price and so on. Right. Let's say for this is the fourth unit or fifth unit, whichever unit it is, fourth unit, I'm willing to pay only this much and what has been asked. So for all the five units, the benefit which I'm going to get is basically this, this entire area. Right. For all of these five units, the benefit which I'm going to get is this entirely this area. And this is what has this is what is called the consumer surplus. Right. So this has also been explained here. Consumer surplus is the area under the demand curve and above the market price. So this area, this entire area is what the consumer surplus is. Right. So the tour, if you're going to buy Q1 star. Okay, I'll use a different brush and I'll tell you. So if you're going to buy Q1 star, the amount or the benefit which you are going to get is this much, this entire area. 
right? This entire area is the benefit which you're going to get, this entire yellow area, right? But the amount which you will have to pay for this is only this area, this rectangle, right? So the benefit is, in the, is the entire yellow area, but the amount, the expenditure which you will have to make is only this green area. So the area which is left out, this pink area, is nothing but the consumer surplus, right? This, this area which is left out is nothing but the consumer surplus. So this area, O B A Q1 star minus area of O P1 star A Q1 star. This is the consumer surplus. So what is this area? This entire yellow area. This area is the total value which the consumer is getting from uh, buying Q1 star, right? And what is this rectangle? This rectangle is the amount which he has to pay in order to buy Q1 star. You, you get in the point? I've written he has to pay X not M. This is actually Q1 star here. The amount which you'll have to pay. This is Q1 star. Right? So in terms of integral, if you want to write this in terms of integral, and that's what your question is asking. So how do you do this? This is basically, I should rather write it in this fashion. Just, just a little mistake here. Since everything is in terms of Q, so I should also write this in terms of Q. So your consumer surplus is 0 to Q1 star. FQ DQ minus P1 star Q1 star. You, you get the point? This integral is the total benefit which you are getting from buying Q1 star. And this P1 star Q1 star is the expenditure which you will have to make for Q1 star. And the difference between the two is nothing but your consumer surplus. You guys are with me? There's no difference as such. I mean, in place of X, you can just write Q. There's no mistake as such, but uh, in order to just write this in terms of the diagram, I have written it this way. So you understood this? But supposedly, if, you're, if, you're, if your uh, function would happen in terms of instead of P equals to Fx kind of a demand curve, if you have the demand curve like this, X equals to Fp. So quantity in terms of price. So this is price in terms of quantity. Now, supposedly, if you have, if you have this, then in that case, this is the way you will find out the consumer surplus. Right? This is the way you'll find out the consumer surplus. And the demand curve is, let's say, it is asymptotic to uh, the price axis. Right? Or uh, if it, say, intersect the price axis at P1, then, of course, it is from P0 to P1 FPTP. There is no change as such. In terms of, instead of quantities, now you have prices. That is the only change which is here. So this was one of the questions which has been asked. The other thing which they are asking is now what they have done is that they have given you two functions. One is your demand function, another is your supply function. And you have to calculate the equilibrium price. Please read it carefully. You have to calculate the equilibrium price and quantity and also calculate the consumer surplus and producer surplus. Now, it's my suggestion to you Whenever the question is asking, even in the numericals, to find out this, to find out that, uh, to find out consumer surplus, to find out producer surplus, there is no harm in just writing one line about it, right? Even though it is a numerical question and they're just asking you to find out consumer surplus and producer surplus, just write in one line what is consumer surplus. Just write in one line what is producer surplus. You get the point? If we have already talked about what is consumer surplus. So I'm not repeating that right, uh, repeating that uh, here. But what is producer surplus, right? Just the opposite of the producer, uh, consumer surplus. So producer surplus is the additional benefit which is enjoyed by producers who were able to sell for a higher price than they would have, uh, than they would have been willing to sell it for, right? So producer surplus is nothing but the area above the supply function and below the current market price. So you understood this? So this is the area which is above the supply function. This guy is the supply function and below the market price. So this entire area, right? This entire area is what the producer surplus is. Clear? 
this entire area is what the producer surplus is this entire area so how do you calculate it so producer surplus is first of all you'll calculate the rectangle right i'll just do it again so first of all what you will do you'll find out the total expenditure so this green thing is let's say total expenditure here right and uh, this area this area i mean which color i should use da, 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 da. let's say i use what okay pink so this area and if you subtract this area from this total green area whatever is left out is basically your producer surplus right whatever is left out is what is the producer surplus so what you are doing is that it is p1 p1 star q1 star minus the integral of 0 to q1 star sq dq so this this integral is actually calculating this entire area this area is what this integral is calculating right and p1 q1 star p1 star q1 star is the entire area of this rectangle and the difference between the two will give you the producer surplus that's what has been written out here now we'll just calculate it it's very simple now so you just have to calculate the equilibrium price first of all so we are given with the demand function and the supply function just uh, i mean it's easier for me to write in terms of p so i just converted both of them in terms of p and at equilibrium your demand is equal to supply right so at equilibrium demand is equal to supply and i have just put my demand function and supply function together like this i just equated them and what i've got is q equals 200 once i've solved it right so what i got is q equals 200 and uh, at q equals 200 you can substitute it in either demand function or supply function i, I think i've substituted it in uh, demand function so you can just substitute this q equals 200 and got your p so your q star is 100 and p star is 3. so this is your equilibrium price and quantity uh, and then how do you calculate the consumer surplus and producer surplus so for consumer surplus i've just drawn this demand function i've just drawn this supply function so the uh, y-axis that is when uh, q is 0 p equals to 5 from the demand function and when p is equal to 0 q equals to 250 from the demand function similarly when uh, p is 0 uh, then q equals to 25 from the supply function and when q is 0 p equals to minus 1 from the supply function i've just drawn them together since these are linear functions i can just draw them easily and what I've got is uh, my intersection is at, is at price equals to 3 and Q equals 200. That's what I've seen. So my consumer surplus is basically this area. Right? My consumer surplus is this area. Right? And which is very easy. So it is the area of this triangle, which is half into 5 minus 3 into 100 minus 0 and this i've calculated in this game this comes out to be 100 producer surplus is basically this area this area so how do you calculate the producer surplus you find out the entire area of the rectangle minus the area below the supply function here like this right so that's what you have done so the entire area of the rectangle is 3 into 100 minus and how do you find out the area of this triangle which is it is half into 100 minus 25 into 3 minus 0 right and just calculated it and i've got 187.5 okay now now you have a different question which says this that uh, define consumer surplus and producer surplus we've already done that we're not going to do that again given the demand function this and supply function this under perfect competition find out consumer surplus and producer surplus guys don't do this mistake of doing this question linearly right 
don't try to draw this and then do it it becomes difficult you have to use integral for that right these are nonlinear functions so you will have to use integral for that so first of all you definitely need to know where demand is equating supply so i've just uh, found that out at equilibrium demand equals to supply i've just equated my demand curve and supply curve and uh, what i've got is my q just your 10th class quadratic equation uh, i couldn't factor out easily so i thought i mean i'll just use this discriminant analysis and i got q equals to 6.44 i have ignored negative q there's nothing like negative q so i've ignored it and i've got 6.44 so at q equals to 6.44 my price will be i can put this in either demand or supply and my price will come out to be 71.52 so my price and quantity is 71.52 and 6.44 respectively so what is the consumer surplus consumer surplus is the uh, area below the demand curve minus the amount which you will have to pay that is the total benefit which you are getting from buying 6.44 units minus the expenditure which you will have to make for 6.44 units right that's what you have done so you just use the integral 0 to 6.44 113 minus q square dq minus 6.44 71.52 right this we have done okay we have already given you the formula for consumer surplus and uh, what is it that you will get is basically this 113q minus qq by 3 definite integral 0 to 6.44 and this is just this so just take your time to calculate it and you will be getting consumer surplus as 171.102 producer surplus would be the p into q minus the area below the supply curve will give you the producer surplus so i just put in the minus sign here and this is the plus sign here so p into q minus this so it is q plus 2 q by 3 with a minus sign here and uh, you can just uh, uh, calculate this and i think i did a little mistake here it should be q plus 2 q by 3 and it is 6.440 so what I've calculated here is this 200.403 for 6.44. I should have calculated for 0 as well. So it should be 8 by 3 as well. 2 by 3, right? So this much you will have to uh, calculate. This, this mistake, I think I, I made this little mistake here. So just some mistake of 2 units and something like that. So I hope you guys can calculate this point easily. So this is one thing, right? So they just asked a very simple question of asking your consumer surplus and producer surplus. So let's see the other question which they have asked. Other things being equal, what happens to consumer surplus when the price of the good falls? Other things being equal, what happens to the consumer surplus when the price of the good falls? Now think about it. Of course, this is your consumer surplus right right assumingly that the demand doesn't change right if demand doesn't change demand function doesn't shift then if there is a fall in the price there will be an increase in consumer surplus and if there is an increase in price there will be a fall in consumer surplus right this has been written out here if there is no shift in the demand right if there is no shift in the demand then the fall in price will lead to increase in consumer surplus and increase in price will lead to fall in consumer surplus but you know what this may not be necessarily a case why because just imagine a scenario i've written the explanation out here but you can also think of like this suppose that if there is a price ceiling price ceiling means that uh, above this the price cannot go right in case of a price ceiling what happens is generally what happens is that the price is set below the market price right now suppose they leave the market price is five and price ceiling is at three so price cannot increase beyond three right now what will happen consumers would definitely want to purchase more at price equals to three 
But the question arises, will the producers would want to sell at price equals to 3, right, at a lower price. So what generally what happens is that the availability of the good falls, right, when the price falls, availability of the good falls. So this, this unavailability of the good, it is creating a dead weight loss. This amount is not going to either consumer or producer. So what happens is that there, definitely there is a benefit of fall in price to the consumer, but sometimes it is outweighed uh, by a fall in the availability of the product. You get to the point. So the answer is not so simple, right? So, but in case if there is a shift in the demand curve or supply curve, then you can probably say, but I guess uh, this is what they wanted to know. What happens? Uh, to the consumer surplus and the price of the goods falls. Maybe they are hinting towards this kind of uh, this kind of uh, explanation. Now, guys, I just want to tell you one thing. The best way to prepare any exam, not only an IES exam or IS Economics optional exam, whichever way, the best way to prepare for any exam is to do the past year papers. Most of the things will get over if you have done the past year as well, right? So now since I know the entire course, so I can do the past years from day one. Maybe you don't know the entire course, so you will have to do the course first and then do the past years. But in any way, whether you're taking some help or you're not, or you're doing on your own, past years are must. I'm not saying your entire paper will be set from the past years, but the tone is going to be the more or less same. If you have been able to tackle the questions which have been asked in the last 10 years, you'll be able, there is a very high chance and a very high probability that you'll be able to tackle the questions which are going to come in your exam as well. So my suggestion to all of you, whosoever is preparing for an Indian Economic Services exam, or an IAS exam, or for that matter, any exam, to do the written practice, right? So I've written almost the entire answer for you. Your thing is that you have to copy it down and write it in your own register, right? Okay, thank you very much, guys.